Many people chart different paths for themselves throughout their lives, as there is no right or wrong way to approach life. Everyone has something unique and different to offer the world, and the people who find that are the people who find ultimate success in life. In today's video, we are going to talk about the inspirational backstory behind Scott Raymond Adams, founder of Dilbert Comics. Dilbert launched in 1989 in a handful of newspapers. Now, Dilbert appears in over 2,000 newspapers in 57 countries and in 19 languages. Dilbert.com was the first website for a daily syndicated comic strip, and it has won the Rubin Award, which is Cartooning's highest honor in 1997. Today, over 20 million Dilbert books and calendars are in print, and Dilbert has been the top-selling page-a-day calendar for a number of years. So, how did one man, Scott Raymond Adams, create such an empire for himself? Before we begin, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification on the right so you'll be notified anytime we have a new video. Let's begin. Scott Adams was born in 1957 in Windham, New York, the son of Paul and Virginia Adams. Growing up, he was a fan of the Peanuts comics, which was a syndicated daily and Sunday American comic strip. Scott Adams started drawing his own comics at the age of six, and he won a drawing competition at the age of 11. Growing up in a small town in upstate New York, there were not a lot of role models that were really successful. Scott Adams knew some people who were successful in their jobs, but nobody who had broken out to do something important. As a kid, he was always jealous of the rich kids that were Harvard-bound, who could look to their family and friends as role models and get all kinds of advice. He worked hard in school and graduated valedictorian from Wyndham Ashland Jewett Central School in 1975 in a class of 39 and remained in the area to receive a BA in economics from Hartwick College in 1979 but he found his local hometown lacking in opportunity. And a few months after graduation, he decided to move to California. On a plane to California, he met a successful businessman who was a CEO at a large company. He shared a life secret with Scott Adams and his success system was the following. The moment he got a job, he almost always started looking for the next job right after. He job hopped all over the country until he became a CEO. If his goal was to get his boss's job, he probably wouldn't have been able to do that. Arriving in California, Scott Adams worked closely with telecommunication engineers at Crocker National Bank in San Francisco between 1979 and 1986. When he joined the organization, he entered a management training program after being held at gunpoint twice in four months as a teller. Throughout the years, he took on many positions, including those of being a management trainee, a computer programmer, a budget analyst, a commercial lender, a product manager, and a supervisor. However, he was unsatisfied with his job at Crocker National Bank as he could no longer move up and decided to switch jobs. He switched jobs to Pacific Bell for a much higher salary, doing budgeting, writing business cases, and also as an engineer in a technology lab. His corporate knowledge base became important as he learned a lot and the personalities he met there became the inspiration for his later success with Dilbert Comics. He worked at Pacific Bell from 1989 to 1995, and he had about a dozen different bosses during the time who all knew about Dilbert. Scott Raymond Adams was very persistent and diligent in pursuing his dream. Although he was working the regular 9 to 5 job just like everyone else, he would set his alarm clock at 4 a.m. He would go get coffee and then spend the start of the day trying to create a new career for himself by working on the Dilbert comic, practicing cartooning. His failed corporate career became the fodder for the Dilbert comic. He quoted, Once it became clear I would not be climbing any higher on the corporate ladder, it freed me to mock managers without worrying that it would stall my career. 
most failures create some sort of unplanned freedom. I took full advantage of mine. In my case, I couldn't quit my day job right away because the comics started very slowly. Working full time was just a necessity. But once Dilbert became a workplace comic, it turned out that I was getting so much material from my day job that having two jobs actually made both of them much easier. My day job didn't bother me anymore because I didn't worry about getting fired so much. I now had a backup plan. My cartooning job was almost ridiculously easy because I was just transcribing my experiences at work. The two of them worked together very effectively. The inspiration of Dilbert came from his observation of everyday odd behavior in the modern workplace and his own willingness to take risks. Dilbert was a white collar employee dubbed the hero of the workplace that poked gentle mocking fun at office life and was soon running in newspapers across the country before becoming a famous comic strip star. The strip revolves around Dilbert, an engineer by nature and his bizarre inventions. Its success is attributable to its workplace setting and themes based in Silicon Valley. Corporate culture is portrayed where employees' skills and efforts are not rewarded and busy work is praised. The incompetence of management is something that is heavily portrayed. His first comic strip was published on April 16, 1989, and today is published daily in 2,000 newspapers in 65 countries and 25 languages. But before Scott Adams found success, he had many different failed business ideas. One of them was trying to create Velcro Rosen bags to keep tennis players' sweat from getting on their racket hands. Scott Adams also invested big in a grocery delivery company, Webvan, that went out of business when the dot-com bubble popped and had a failed restaurant with a business partner. But he treated each failure as a learning experience and advises others to follow his advice. Some of his most memorable failures include the following. After college, Adams and a friend wrote a beginner's guide to meditation that only sold three copies, but Adams learned about the benefits of meditation and how to develop a product. Adams spent a year writing a computer program to make file transfers easier before emails could send large files, and although this was not successful, he gained a clear understanding of how hard it is to build something new. Adams built a website where users could submit crackpot ideas, and the website ultimately failed, but Adams learned a lot about website design, which would serve him well later on when creating Dilbert. We will end with some of the most famous life advice from Scott Adams. Life advice number one. Every skill you acquire doubles your odds of success. Scott Adams said that he was an average cartoonist, an average writer, average at humor, but combined it all together to give him an extraordinary edge over others. So think of the areas in your life where you are average at certain things. If you are able to combine all these average skills together, you come up with an edge. For example, if you studied engineering, you could probably be a good engineer. But if you studied engineering and took classes on public speaking, there's a good chance that you'll be running the show. If you intelligently choose which skills to layer on top of each other, you gain an extraordinary skill you can use to dominate over your competition. Life advice number two, you can't control luck directly, but you can move from a game with bad odds to a game with good odds. The world is like a reverse casino. In a casino, if you gamble long enough, you're certainly going to lose. But in the real world, where the only thing you're gambling, say, is your time or your embarrassment, then the more stuff you do, the more you give luck a chance to find you. If you do one thing and stop, you didn't give luck a chance to find you. Remember, you only need one thing to work. The advice here is to not give up too early and to keep trying different things until you find success. By failing enough times, you will give yourself the opportunity to get lucky. Life advice number three, develop a system and stick to it. Goals are for losers. For example, 
If your goal is to lose 10 pounds, you will spend every moment until you reach the goal, if you reach it at all, feeling as if you are short of your goal. Goal-oriented people exist in a state of nearly continuous failure that they hope will be temporary. Adam's solution is to forget your goals and develop a system that will produce incremental gains and an approach that meshes perfectly with his previous advice to constantly be on the lookout for the next opportunity. Today, Scott Adams has a net worth of $75 million by combining different skill sets that he has carefully honed despite coming up from a working class background. He is an extraordinary cartoonist, best-selling author, and a multimillionaire. I hope you enjoyed this video. Our channel focuses on holistic health, meditation, and daily 1% improvement. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and you'll be notified anytime we have new content. Also, make sure you check out the book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big, a book written by Scott Adams, which dives further into his story and life advice. The link is in the description below. So. How many times are you willing to fail before you find your ultimate success? Drop a comment below and we'll be sure to address it in the next video. Until then, see you next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification to the right.